Ladies and gentlemen, all good things must come to an end. Deep down, we all knew that one day this was inevitable, that eventually this day would come. And over the past few days that I've been playing Call of Dragons, I realized something. It just hit me all of a sudden, but I realized that it's April 1st, and that means that it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> You know, the worst part about this video is that some people are only going to watch for like four seconds, or they're only going to see the title and thumbnail, and they're going to think that it's real. They're going to think that I actually quit Rise of Kingdoms. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. The show goes on. What's going on, guys? Cheers that's right it's april fools and i just couldn't resist okay i think it was last year that i made the april fools video talking about the different types of cpo that are coming to the game because that's when they just announced cpo prime so this year i i had to do it okay because i've been getting a lot of comments from people saying omniarch why are you playing call of dragons so much i don't like call of dragons i've seen comments saying like why are all the rise of kingdoms youtubers playing call of dragons right now so i figured you know what today i'm gonna do a little bit of clickbait okay this is the one day of the year where my clickbait is actually okay i'm actually allowed to do horrendous clickbait today because it's april fools okay every other time I i'm guilty okay it's just terrible clickbait that's my bad but today it's allowed so what we're gonna talk about today is why i've been playing call of dragons on the channel why all the other rise of kingdoms content creators are playing call of dragons as well as probably some of your friends and i'm gonna make the argument that you should at least give the game a try okay but let's let's talk about this right because a lot of people are saying that call of dragons dragons is just a copy and paste of rise of kingdoms I get, I've seen if I had a dollar for every time I had that comment I'd be able to bribe you guys to click the like button which I, I mean who knows maybe maybe I'll get lucky and you'll do it today anyway please can you no you're still salty about the click okay I get it I understand all right you can like the next video you can skip this one but at first glance sure okay the game looks and feels a lot like rise of kingdoms and if you didn't know this game is pretty much developed by the same people obviously there's different teams developing and working on the different games but this game is made by Farlight which is a I guess a new international publishing studio or company that is kind of just a branch of Lilith that's at least how I understand it Don't don't actually quote me on that but let me ask you this okay is Pepsi just a copy and paste of Coca-Cola is Burger King just a copy and paste of McDonald's I mean if you want to boil it down to like the fundamental framework then sure everything is kind of a copy and paste of whatever came before it and you could make that argument for Call of Dragons as well but the reality is that if you play the game for a little while there's plenty of differences here that aren't in Rise of Kingdoms just like if you play the latest Call of Duty there's some differences to how it was last year or if you play the latest Madden there's some differences with how it, okay well actually Madden is pretty much the same game every year but you get my point so just saying oh it's a copy and paste of Rise of Kingdoms like that doesn't really hold any water because rise of kingdoms wasn't even the first city builder rise of kingdoms is just a copy and paste of the city builders that came before it is basically just an updated version of game of war fire age okay and that's basically just a, a rip off a mobile version of like civ of course super watered down so i'm gonna stand up and say no this is not just a copy and paste of rise of kingdoms okay it's a new game and that is one of the biggest reasons that so many people are playing it and so many content creators are covering it okay this is the new kid on the block this game came out on the 28th of March of course the beta came out like six uh six months ago something like that and rise of kingdoms is quite old I don't know if you guys know this if you're a new player if you've only been playing rise of kingdoms for a year or two you're like a new player to the game rise of kingdoms has been out since like what 2018 it used to be called rise of civilizations a lot of you guys don't even know that because you're relatively new to the game but rise of kingdoms is like five years old it's like four and a half five years old okay and some players of rise of kingdoms who love the game may be looking at call of dragons and saying well they're spending all of this time and money developing call of dragons when they should be spending that time and money making rise of kingdoms better adding new mechanics adding new things and i can understand why you may 
feel that way but that's not the reality that we live in okay rise of kingdoms still has a large development team that is still putting out new content we just saw them release a, a video while i was on vacation so i couldn't actually cover it but they talked about how greece is coming to rise of kingdoms that's a new civilization just like they've done for the past two years they also talked about new archers coming into the game they talked about a bunch of other things revamping arc of osiris and champions of olympia okay so rise of kingdoms isn't going anywhere and in fact they're still developing that game and trying to make it better but and this is the biggest thing rise of kingdoms is an old game it has an old foundation okay if the game came out in 2018 that means they started developing the game in 2017 maybe late 2016 and times change technology changes i mean think about what your phone can do now compared to what it could have done back in 2017 rise of kingdoms has five years of updates patches hot fixes bugs all this other stuff that has been built upon a five or six year old foundation so when you look at rise of kingdoms as a game you know it's really starting to bump up against the limits of in my, in my opinion this is what it looks like to me it looks like it's bumping up against the limits of that game engine and the way that it was designed from the ground up i mean people have always talked about lag in rise of kingdoms in the big kvk fights and pass openings and things like that right and that's true and let me just say that as a player who's been playing since 2018 it's way better now than it used to be a lot of you guys don't know that or you don't remember that but it's way better than it used to be okay so let's just let's just be honest with ourselves but there's still fundamental problems with rise of kingdoms right so when we come into a world where the developers are trying to add new and cool things to rise of kingdoms like the ranged combat system right you also have to consider that adding those things into a game that already suffers lag problems is only going to make that worse now you could say oh well you know they should just update or upgrade the servers or whatever and i don't know i don't i'm not a developer i don't know anything about that so i'm not gonna sit here and pretend like there's an easy solution to solving the biggest problems of the game because the game's been around for five years and it's made millions of dollars and if they could just snap a finger and fix it i'm they probably would because it would just lead to a better player experience which would lead to more players or people playing longer or maybe spending more money okay so what i'm trying to say is that a lot of the old players for rise of kingdoms are getting bored of some of the repetitive events okay but it's pretty clear to me that it's getting harder and harder for the developers to kind of break that mold and push the boundary of what the rise of kingdoms engine can do because it was made so long ago five or six years in the tech world is an eternity so i think it's always kind of been inevitable that rise of kingdoms would have a successor that utilizes newer and better technology and coding and that's call of dragons and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are playing it right now but besides that there's also the graphics i mean look these are three 3D models okay and that might not mean a lot to you but that means a lot to me and it also means a lot to people who are new to the genre who are new to these games okay this is kind of the industry standard ever since we saw like infinity kingdom came out and then we saw land of empires come out these games have full 3d models and they look really good and so it's about time that we get something like that out of the developers of rise of kingdoms but again that game and its art style are already built for so what are they going to do go back and remake 3d models for all the old command i mean that's just it, it that wouldn't even probably work with the art style of rise of kingdoms or they would have to like tweak it to make it 3d but beyond that the actual game just looks better i mean if we zoom out there's so much more detail in the world in the mobs in the armies if i deploy one of my armies over here okay i'm gonna send out just 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 my guanwin all right we'll take a look here uh, but you can actually like clearly see the the hero here in the open field with the ballista behind it right you can see that in rise of kingdoms but it's so tiny and it's all pixelated and it's this is just i mean everyone knows that this is it's way better okay the game looks way better look the trees there's different types of trees and flora they're blowing in the wind the uh the darklings in the open world which are basically barbarians they look different okay they have the there's warlocks and there's like infantry ones and stuff and you could go like what is this dude this is just a random dark creature okay the world is just way more developed it's way more fleshed out the world has more life to it than rise of kingdoms uh and 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 really it's something that you notice mostly when you play the game for a little while you go back to rise of kingdoms after looking at a world like this and it's just it feels a little bit more empty 
empty it just does i mean look at the trees in my city man they cast shadows there's you know there's light is flickering off of the water the graphics just look way better in this game okay and it's, it doesn't make the game better but it's certainly a plus it's certainly a pro and it definitely is nice to have the game look and feel a lot better a lot smoother and let me tell you this game runs really well right out of the box right at launch the game is running at least for me really good on both my phone and on my pc imagine how much more laggy rise of kingdoms would be if they tried to implement these incredible graphics and an entire over like a revamp of the entire world map i mean if you really look at rise of kingdoms the world map is pretty much just 2d it's basically just a big flat grass chunk that's pretty much what it is there's some stuff out there out, out in the open world but it's nothing like this boys it's I mean look at what is this there's just like dinosaur but like bro it's it the world is so much bigger and and more beautiful and look there's I mean we we scroll up just a little bit and now look we're in a completely different uh we're in a completely different biome here okay we have these dark creatures like these troll looking things I mean is it perfect no but the game looks way better but it's not just the graphics that they've updated they've also added new mechanics to the game if we take a look here i have two armies that i'm going to send out to attack this level nine darkling patrol their warlocks okay and one of the new things in in this game compared to rise of kingdoms is ranged combat and you don't have to build a tower you don't have to sit there and use siege units but you can see that there's actually different ranges my wall deer over here attacked from a farther range than my guanwin because my guanwin had ballistas which are marksmen and you can see that their attack range is medium and my wall deer had vestals which are a magic unit and they have a very far attack range here we might be able to see it again look i'm attacking from much farther away here and we're both hitting the same target so the ranged mechanics in call of dragons are actually new and they're actually better than what we have in rise of kingdoms but it's it's not just that the units themselves function differently it's that the world itself is actually three-dimensional okay there's actually 3d terrain here that we don't really have in rise of kingdoms for example you can actually walk up this mountain you can climb up this mountain there's different levels to it okay and i can zoom out here and you can see sort of an overview of how this is is working uh but you basically can enter the mountain to over over here which there's already a road built by some alliance uh bw apparently we'll talk about that in a moment but you can come up here and up the up the side of the mountain and you can scale this mountain okay and the way that this actually makes a difference uh, rather than just looking nicer is that you have flying units in the game which can fly over the mountain so they don't actually have to use those roads but you can also attack at range from the top of the mountains downward to you know whatever's down below right and you can actually see the camera zooms in and out as i go from different uh different heights here on the map so it actually makes a difference for ranged units whereas if you use a melee infantry unit they're actually gonna have to run up the side of the mountain to attack whatever is is up here okay so there's a combination between the more nuanced and advanced range system compared to rise of kingdoms with the better and improved three-dimensional map and terrain they go hand in hand to provide a much more complex and better ranged combat system now whether you like it or not is totally up to you and i think that there's still a case to be made about the simplicity of rise of kingdoms combat i mean there's there's nothing that feels better than just a big open field brawl right like everyone loves that and the different aoe's popping off and and we love it okay it's been around for years and that's incredible but this is kind of the evolution of that or at least their best attempt at evolving that combat style and that is appealing to a lot of people who've been playing rise of kingdoms for years they're looking for something new and fresh and this is kind of like the evolution of what they've come to know and love and again on top of that there's an entire road system you can see here if i zoom out the alliance that i'm in right now has built a road can connecting all the different uh, towers to one another which means it's actually going to be faster if you are marching along your roads and this is going to provide a nice way for you to navigate around the map it's just another strategic way that you can plan your alliance development here in the open world but on top of that there's also the new barricade mechanic which remember how i showed you that if you're in infantry march you're gonna have to walk up this ramp up the side of the mountain and then walk up here as well well guess what you can actually build barricades here so enemies can't go past them they're gonna have to destroy them and there are certain heroes in the game that 
are better at building and destroying than others they are the engineering heroes so again this is just another small layer of strategy and complexity when it comes to building and moving around the map and if you want more strategy with your heroes themselves we can take a look at some of the different ways that they deal damage so if we look at Waldir here he is a magic specialized unit okay which means that you're typically going to pair him with the Vestals here and you'll notice here that the Vestals have magic attack as opposed to some of the other different uh unit types here in the game like the swordsman have physical attack these are two completely separate stats which matters because if you take a look at some of the artifacts in the game for example if we take a look at the enchiridion of advanced incantations did i say that right probably not but if we take a look at this artifact okay uh, you can see that it actually boosts your magic unit attack by 6.9 percent so if you equip this artifact to a hero that is leading infantry for example it's actually it's gonna still boost their regular attack but infantry don't have magic attack okay then there's the flying units the celestials over here that also deal magic damage that aren't vestals they're a special unit type that you actually get at the very end of the military technology over here there's also obviously a tier four version as well so there's just some more stats here in the game that you can focus on which gives some more identity to the actual units and heroes that you're using in the battle and not to brush over this but there is the artifact system okay in rise of kingdoms we have a bunch of equipment uh, in this game there's just one artifact that you equip to your army but these artifacts are super powerful okay I mean you're gaining some stats here but they also have their own active skill that you can decide when you want to use them in the battle okay so if I send out an a, a, a legion here to attack this darkling patrol you're gonna see that right next to my army I can use that active skill of the artifact whenever I want now some of them actually have rage requirements right but I just launch a fireball and boom I'm dealing damage before I'm even I didn't even start attacking them yet right so it's a really cool way that you can sort of decide when you want to use those artifacts to give you a strategic advantage and there's a lot of them okay this is just a handful that I've gotten in the game but let me tell you okay there's even more so they're gonna play a huge part in the game moving forward and it's kind of like having a sixth skill on your hero or your army and knowing when to actually manually activate those active skills on these artifacts is just another nuanced way of adding strategy to the game because some of the cooldowns on these things are super long I mean this one the green finger sickle actually instantly helps you gather but it's got like a 12 hour cooldown or something like that so if you use these at the wrong time you may just waste it for a while and the fact that there's some weight and consequences to that I think is pretty cool but it's not just artifacts and barricades that you're going to be bringing to battle there's also the behemoths here in the open world and if I zoom out you could see that they have their own little white icons here okay we can go over to uh the giant and you could see what this guy looks like he's pretty cool okay and these guys are basically like your shrines that you would capture in in rise of kingdoms because you could see here that by occupying this behemoth's lair you do gain counterattack damage and you also can have more members in your alliance right so there are actually some buffs you get by controlling different behemoths but on top of that you actually can deploy this behemoth if you capture it in the open field in war okay so if I go into the technology here uh, at the very bottom there's the behemoth technology and here it lets you summon one of the behemoths that you have in battle okay so that's huge if you're in a big open field pvp brawl and then you just summon a giant just boom right there in the open field and look at all these skills it can do look at all this stuff dude so you're literally like summoning this massive monster and and there's also at the center of the map obviously there's an even bigger dragon it's call of dragons everybody should expect that okay but there's like the hydra over here if we take a look the hydra looks so cool okay it's sleeping but you can see the icon here it's a three-headed dragon like it is in the mythologies or whatever but again this is another layer of strategy and it's an evolution of the strategy that was built in rise of kingdoms that's a basic foundation uh, that call of dragons is trying to build off of they're trying to see how can we do rise of kingdoms better how can we make it more strategic 
more interesting more intricate more nuanced and more fun that's really what they're trying to accomplish here and it's up to you if that's actually true or not maybe you don't like that that's totally fine I'm not trying to say that it's better but I'm just trying to say that there are plenty of differences here between Call of Dragons and Rise of Kingdoms that may encourage people to play this game over are okay another mechanic about this game that is appealing to a lot of people and this is actually a mechanic that a lot of city builder games have that rise of kingdoms doesn't or at least not in the same way and that's different seasons okay so you start in season one and i know that rise of kingdoms has pre kvk and then kvk one and things like that but the seasons there's actually a server reset after each season now you're still going to keep all of your heroes and all the skills that you put on them and all your artifact skills and all that stuff but it does reset the level of your heroes back to level one it actually takes away all of the exp tombs that you may have saved throughout that season it takes away the cp items okay so you can't just hoard them forever it also resets your artifact level and the dust this is essentially just your experience tombs but for your artifacts okay it resets your procedure policies all that other stuff okay there's other things that that reset as well again the major account progress is still there so you still keep like your building levels and, and your technology and all that stuff right but it resets enough here to where you're not really going to be hoarding too much throughout the season you're really just going to be spending down these these resources to get the maximum amount of value before the season ends and then afterwards the season resets and alliances go away you can create new alliances new people can migrate into your well we don't actually I don't think we have migration at this at this time but in theory it would be the case that you know new people could come into your server and you can make new brand new alliances or you can continue to form the old ones if you wanted to right and a lot of city builder games do this having something to work towards after each season and rebuilding up your empire is gonna be kind of cool and I'm sure that there's gonna be different phases and different things that they introduce into season two season three season four it's not like you're gonna be playing the exact same game over and over and over again just like in rise of kingdoms different kvks come out and they have different formats there's gonna be different seasons at least to my knowledge and that's how my, I'm understanding this and that's the whole point of seasons uh, is that they can introduce new things right all while keeping the game fresh and exciting at least to an extent also this game has a story and it's fully voice acted like it's actually fully voice acted I, I'm not gonna actually turn on the volume just so you can hear this uh, but all the heroes and everything are voice acted and you can interact with them and there's actually a story to the game I don't know if you guys noticed this but rise of kingdoms doesn't really have a story okay like yeah there's barbarians and there's a little bit of backstory and lore to the barbarians or whatever the case is but all the different heroes in this game have lore which is super cool and I guess you could argue that rise of kingdoms has that because the commanders are actually from history but this is like its own unique story like you download the game and you're thrown into a really cool cinematic if you didn't see that you missed my video where I first started playing the game I recommend you check that out but it's awesome okay and I actually think that it's really high quality for a mobile game just straight up it, it just is and a lot of people like story a lot of people like lore they like to know and immerse themselves into the world that they're playing it and that's definitely something that rise of kingdoms is lacking especially for new players right you and I all know the different commanders in rise of kingdoms and we know how they function and we know all that but it's a lot for new players to learn and when there's no story or no lore or nothing like that it may be harder for new players to get in and learn those characters and know what they do and know kind of their personality and what role they play that matters to a lot of people and the final reason that I think a lot of people are trying call of dragons right now is because the game is really simple right now and I know that that sounds crazy but think about how many systems have been implemented into rise of kingdoms you have the commander system with their skills and their experience you have to level them up and use your stars then you have the equipment system on top of that okay and that also has its own talent system and an iconic system on top of that then you have the crystal technology system and that resets every kvk you also have the museum system where you can unlock relics for older commanders and now you have the armament system which have inscriptions as well and those are all randomized there's a lot to learn about rise of kingdoms and all these systems are layered on top of one another and in call of dragons the game is new it hasn't been plagued with all of these different systems yet and you know there may be a time at some point in the future where we see off to the right here uh, a little equipment box okay and then maybe down here they have a, a little uh, armament box or something like that okay that, that's totally possible 
but for right now it's kind of just like how rise of kingdoms used to be when it first came out and the simplicity of that is just something that i think a lot of people miss there's so many events and so many things to focus on and work on a rise of kingdoms that can be overwhelming for a lot of people and they might just be kind of tired of it and they want to try something new and i think there's a lot to be said about that and the final thing that i want to leave you with is that this game has a completely different theme okay humans orcs elves it's the classic trio okay there's even what i would consider goblins here as well okay this has worked for lord of the rings this has worked for world of warcraft this has worked time and time again it's worked in dungeons and dragons it's worked in magic the gathering this is something that you always see okay it works and people like it they like the high fantasy they like that type of war and this is a different theme that's not for everybody but it's certainly successful and it's not really something that's in rise of kingdoms there aren't orcs in rise of kingdoms there aren't elves in rise of kingdoms they're all historical figures and that's great i love that and a lot of people do and that's a big draw for the game but for a lot of people who aren't really that interested in historical figures this is cool to them mages man frost mages that's classic the archer elves that's what they're known for jumping around in the trees in the magical garden it's a tried and true formula and a lot of people enjoy it so hopefully this helps clear up why myself and a lot of other people are playing call of dragons right now and we're really enjoying it and we're giving it a, its time of day and who knows maybe in three months this game will not be as popular as rise of kingdoms it won't take off it won't be as big and a lot of people maybe will just go back to rise of kingdoms or whatever the case might be okay who knows what the future of this game is but the fact that it's new it just came out and there's a lot of hype around it has a lot of people interested a lot of people are checking it out just to see what it's all about and that's exciting for me and a lot of other people so hopefully this video clears up some misconceptions about the game that it's just a copy and paste and hopefully it helps you understand why so many people are giving the game a try when to you it might just seem like a copy and paste of rise of kingdoms and hopefully you don't hate me too much for the horrendous clickbait on this video if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it if you're new here consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of dragons video comment down below your thoughts on call of dragons have you tried the game yet do you refuse to try it i would love to hear from you down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace